This is the final segment of our Christmas platform, uh, the special edition of our program as we talk about uh, the Junkanoo uh, seasons uh, here in our country, which is, uh, of course, Boxing Day and New Year's, and now we have to add uh, a carnival to it as well, Junkanoo Carnival, and um, the Extreme... The Extreme Junkanoo Junk Carnival. carnival. Tell us about that. How, how you got going with that? Well, Carnival is new to the Bahamas, and this is a platform, a new platform for artists to showcase their talents. Mm -hmm. uh, songwriters, um, costume designers, builders, uh, not only locally, but globally. Mm -hmm. And so this is a new and very interesting market that uh, I think that it's, it's worth exploring. So, so Junkanoo has become an industry here in, 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 in the Bahamas because I am told that there are groups uh, who are uh, employed to paste for other groups or yes. young men who uh, take contracts. Yes. Uh, yes so tell us about the, that. The economic impact of Junkanoo and Carnival mm. is tremendous in terms of uh, monies that's flowing throughout the economy throughout this time, right? Yeah, yes. uh, you have persons pasting, taking on work to paste. You have uh, seamstress uh, taking on contracts to sew outfits. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a, a really huge economic impact. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's worth us growing this product. And, and then you have uh, the importation of materials that um, uh, you, all the Junkanoo groups have to use, and so uh, yes. you have uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars invested in, yes. in materials alone. Yes, well, we import feathers, we import material um, that's used to construct, design and construct the costumes. Mm. So stones and beads and all these kind of things. So this is a very, very vibrant business. You know, one group leader told me that, you know, they don't go out to get the first prize. Um, uh, and he said to me, uh, when they get to Bay Street and they line up and they see their uh, costumes uh, on parade, that in itself is like a big win yes. uh, because of the amount of time that they have spent in the shacks uh, yes. and the amount of energy uh, placed in this, eh? Yes, well, uh, with Junkano, this is, it's about pride. And so, it's a pride thing. Yeah, you have uh, a common man along with the businessman coming together in the shack, working towards one common goal, and that's to go out there and have a good showing, right? So it's a, it's a pride thing. At the end of the day, you want to win, but um, you, you, you still feel a sense of accomplishment, eh? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, definitely. You're working on costumes for upwards of three, four months out of the year. And a lot of the times, it's going around the clock, 24 hours especially coming down to the end of the, uh, coming up towards the parade. Do you have an inspection uh, committee? Yes, we do. Actually, the costume design mm. team is responsible for the inspections of the costumes. Okay. Yes. I know in the old days, um, Gus Cooper went from house to house because uh, most of the uh, young uh, men uh, they pasted their costumes at home. Yes. And so he would go from house to house yes. uh, viewing costumes and he would tell you whether or not you were ready for Bay Street. Exactly. If your costume does not meet a certain standard, and this is, uh, this is passed down from Gus Cooper, if your costume does not meet a uh, specific standard, then you will not be allowed on the parade. Mm. And so we have the eye for detail uh, that uh, we look for. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, there is an inspection process, and you're absolutely correct where Mr. Cooper used to come around to the houses, uh, where we used to have a lot of the shacks in the back of the houses, mm -hmm. uh, and he used to act, uh, and carry out the inspections there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I see too that uh, these days, um, in, in addition to the fringed uh, costumes, the crepe paper, that, yes. that, that, that uh, people are painting. You're allowed to paint, and there's a certain amount yes. of cloth uh, yes. and feathers being used. How do you know what proportion to, uh, to use? Well, uh, your costume should be at least more than 50% pasted with the gray paper. Okay. Yeah, and so that, these are some of the things that when we carry out the inspection, uh, we look for these things. And so we have a set of criteria that we send down to the rank and file of the group. Mm -hmm. so that they know exactly when in the preparation stage of their costume, they know exactly what it takes 
to go into uh, the costume preparation and what we look for. And then music is a big part of, of, of Junkano. Your music has to be right. Yes. And um, these Junkano groups now have assembled orchestras almost yes. in some of these uh, groups. Tell us about the Valley Boys uh, brass section. Well, you know that the Valley Boys was very instrumental in uh, introducing the brass to Junkano. And so uh, this is Snowball now, and we're introducing even more instruments, uh, which will be seen on Boxing Day, by the way. Is that right? Yeah, so we have scrapers, we have the, the conkalakas or the unkalunkas, whatever you want to call them. That's uh, when they uh, have the, mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of new things that we're experimenting with. And so it comes out, it manifests itself on the parade in the sound. Yes. And, and this translate, translates into the energy. And, and, the, and, and what is um, interesting is that with all of that brass, that, that uh, you are able to uh, get the cowbells and the goatskin drums uh, to uh, be synchronized, yes, really, yes, yes. Um, with, with, with saxophones and all yes. these type of instruments, eh? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, well, you know, we have a dynamic music team, and so it boils down to the personnel that you have. And so we have, uh, we pride ourselves on talent, uh, you know, where we recruit the best, the very best. And so this is how we develop and, and move from one level to the next. It, it, it is a big show. That is what yes, it, it is. is. Yes, it is. Uh, and it's growing, you know. Yes. It's growing, yeah. Uh, Junkanoo is the biggest show that uh, Bahamians put on on a yearly basis. Eh? The biggest, yes. And so, you know, we're all over the world right now in Junkanoo, and we're looking to take over this world. Mm -hmm. Junkanoo. You're talking about internationalizing yes. Junkanoo yes. uh, for the world. Yes. And, and your video went around the world, uh, uh, Bianca, um, and uh, you had to practice as well, right? With the, uh, when you uh, were the queen in 2012, as your daughter uh, probably practiced uh, for, the, for the part that she's playing in, in this year's parade. You know, yes, there is a lot of practice. Um, there's a lot of practice, especially with the choreographed section. Not only that, we've been on our health series, you and I, for a while, and this is really, you need to be healthy to be able to do this. What mm -hmm. a marathon, uh, carrying the heavy costumes, even carrying the instruments, you know, the heavy drums and everything, even having that uh, enough aerobic energy to be able to dance all the way through. It's like, it's incredible mm -hmm. um, how, fit you need to be and so of course the well in the valley boys group and i'm sure everywhere they had um uh, fitness instructors they were working out on the beach you know my daughter's practicing two and a half three hours a day this is some major stuff and you you are there as a fellowship but how wonderful it is um to be able to be in the shack and have that fellowship with each other and be doing art, be working on a goal for no money, just for your pride, right? Be working on practicing instruments and learning in instruments and learning these new, what was the instrument Unkalukas. called? Unkaluka. Who could play an Unkaluka, you know? <laughs> and, then, yes. and then you've got children and they're doing that too. And, you know, that's something that I really appreciate also that is women and men and children and elderly and all, all different kinds of um, people uniting together and doing this amazing thing that's a marathon. You're doing it all night long, all night till the morning. And then even though we, we um, pride ourselves on being valley boys, everybody has respect for each other in Junkanoo. You know, uh, we, love, we love the Saxons, we love one family, we love everybody that is in this as a bigger group and we all understand what it is like we understand now doug has been up for three days in the shack working and everything right now like you know, a zombie it, it brings me to the question how you became a valley valley girl well the the, the thing because is, you could have been in, in some other group why 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 the valley know. boys if i could have i am valley it just so happens that my um ex-husband side of the family is also born valley so I see. my children are okay. born valley okay. no but that's not how it happened it's a part of the dna that's not how it happened <laughs> yeah for her for her uh -huh. but um uh what happened was my dad just loves culture 
I don't remember him ever having an event where he did not have junk canoe. I always admired and went to junk canoe and always admired junk canoe, always wanted to be a part of it. And I, I wanted it so much, you know, and I almost say like it was almost like it was willed to me. At that time, it was a perfect timing um, for me. And then I got invited in to play this role. And, and my life has changed ever since. It's been life changing. And we just love it so much. I, I, I've seen photographs of your father um, uh, with the uh, John Canoe group, the Valley Boys. Um, I think he was shaking a cowbell. Oh, yes, but <laughs> my dad, he, um, he always, just on that note, he always wanted to contribute to all the groups. He didn't ever just focus or sponsor one group. So mm. we're not in Valley Boys because my dad sponsored it at all. I see, I see. <laughs> uh, so he, he was b being uh, very eclectic and, and sharing uh, with all of the groups um, in, in, in the Bahamas. Eh? Yes, that's right. He was very keen on that. In fact, I even asked him if he would sponsor Valley Boys and he said, no, he needed to sponsor. He didn't want to just pick one. And even he would be like that, like when Farrakhan came to our house and he had hired, I don't know, 200 people, I think. He wanted to make sure to have people from each group representing when Louis Farrakhan came to our house to give a speech. I remember. I remember that well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Louis Farrakhan was so intrigued. He was just blown away uh, with the Junkano music. Yes, he was. It, it was quite a treat. He was. And everybody is. You know, it's... Um, they always say that even if we have it on television, it's, it's not like being there. And people can't imagine how you feel when you're actually there and how your heartbeat even changes, right? And you go home and you still feel this, do 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 you do 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 you know, in your, in your, in your pulse, it, right? Yes. And, and then also to see how people get into it and the looks on their face, it's like you're in a trance almost, and it's beautiful. It, it, it is transformative, isn't it? it? Is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes. Well, thank you so very much, Mr. Val. We, we're going to allow you to get back to the shack. All right. <laughs> uh, thank you so very much for being here. Thank Pleasure you so very mine. much, thank Bianca. Thank you. Uh, thank you for watching this uh, special Christmas edition of our program, uh, The Platform. And uh, we uh, expect a great performance uh, from the Valley Boys and the others. And uh, again, we congratulate them. And we say congratulations to Nagat International on their 50th anniversary. Merry Christmas and good evening everyone. <laughs>